Hi, my name is Mark and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the crafting and social website Ravelry and explore the variety of features it offers. If you're a crafter who already uses Ravelry, there might be some details in this video that are new to you, or you might have suggestions for me of better ways that I can be using and navigating the site. Either way, let's get into this week's video. First, what is Ravelry? Wikipedia tells us that Ravelry is a social networking service first launched in 2007 with the aim of being an organizational tool for all things fiber arts. The site is geared towards knitters, crocheters, weavers, and spinners, and offers a variety of tools, whether that's finding patterns, keeping track of your stash and tools, and communicating with other crafters. Personally, I use Ravelry on a daily basis to search for patterns, browse patterns, and keep track of them in my library and favorites. If you're a current Ravelry user, let me know in the comments what your favorite tools of the site are. So let's jump into accessing the website and creating an account. Before accessing all of Ravelry's features, you are required to create an account. This is completely free to do and you don't have to give away any personal information. You could create a fairly anonymous username and whatever password you see fit. I would recommend writing down your username and password somewhere so that in the future you don't lose access to everything you've saved in your Ravelry account. Once you've signed up for a Ravelry account or logged into your existing account, you'll arrive at the home page. Here on the home page, you'll see tabs up top for different pages of the site as well as your inbox, your notebook, and then your account information. On the homepage, there's always a featured blog. So you'll see here the first post is about Valentine's Day, craft your heart out. Typically these blog posts feature patterns from the site, designers, certain projects, sometimes things like craft alongs that are going on around the world. And these posts happen sometimes every month, other times they happen more sporadically, like every two to three months. Here's a post from December with holiday appropriate projects. And this is just like the Ravelry newspaper. All right. If you're using Ravelry for the first time, one of the best ways to get acquainted with the site is by learning how to navigate the search. Here on the homepage is the quick search. It should be automatically set to patterns, but you could change that to other topics, books, designers, forums, groups, people, etc. So leaving that on patterns, if I search, let's look for something random. Let's look for a dog sweater. So, that dog sweater search resulted in 1,786 matches. That's a lot of dog sweaters. Automatically, these results are sorted by what's hot right now. I could change that and sort by another filter. You could do most popular, the most favorited patterns, the rating, the difficulty, etc. If you'd like to look at all of them, you can start scrolling. If you see a pattern you like, for example, let's look at this dandy dog sweater here. If I click on that, it will take me to the pattern page. On the pattern page, we'll be given a whole lot of information before having to download or purchase the pattern if it's a paid pattern. Along the left side, you'll see a series of pictures. If you click to expand, it gives you all the pictures in one place. And back on that pattern page, 
you'll see a lot of quick facts, fast facts here, that can help you discern whether or not this is the type of pattern you're looking for. First, it will show you where the pattern's published. Sometimes that's just on Ravelry. Other times it's part of an external website or a published book. Then it gives us the craft. This is a crocheted dog sweater. And then we have the suggested yarn, the yarn weight, the gauge, hook size, yardage, the sizes available, whether the crochet terminology is US terminology or UK or European terminology. And then there are some tags here from the designer. Sometimes the designer will add more information in this section. And that's the gist of this pattern page. If I wanted to purchase this pattern, I could do that over here by selecting buy on Ravelry. And then I would be taken to the purchase page where I could link my PayPal information and purchase the pattern. I can also choose to keep track of this pattern by saving it to my favorites. If I click this heart for save and favorites, it then gives me a tab where I can add notes and comments if I need to specifically remember why I was looking at this pattern or what I plan to use it for. If you don't have any notes or comments, you can just click save and it will be added to your favorites. We'll talk more about your favorites and how to look through them in a few minutes. On the same pattern page, you can click a few more tabs. Yarn Ideas will give you a page full of yarns suggested or recommended for the pattern. After that, there's the Projects tab. The Projects tab is one of my favorite places on Ravelry. The Projects tab keeps all of the submitted projects from Ravelry users organized in one place. So here we have nine pages of examples of this pattern that various Ravelry users have made. This allows us to see a more realistic view of how each pattern works out. It gives us a variety of examples of yarn choices, color choices, and fits. And it's nice that on these project pages, you'll see that people add their own notes. If I click on this specific project, I'll see the person who made it. I'll see when they started and finished the project, if they've submitted that information. And then we'll see their notes. So this Ravelry user gave us three updates of notes across several months. Following the Projects tab, we can take a look at the Comments tab. The Comments tab gives us a chance to see general comments Ravelry users have left on the pattern. Some of these comments will be from people who have made the project. Others will just be comments from people giving feedback on their sense of the pattern. They might think it looks great, it's something they want to make in the future, but it's not necessarily a review of the pattern. Just a general feed where people can react to the pattern. All right, let's head back to our search and let's talk about how to narrow things down. So as I mentioned, this dog sweater search brought us 1,786 matches. To filter that, we'll move to the left-hand column of the page and we can explore some of these filters. The first thing I'm going to select is the craft. Let's say I'd really like to crochet this dog sweater instead of knit it. I can see here that there are 619 options for crocheted dog sweaters and over a thousand for knitting. I'll select crochet and that will immediately bring our search down to 619 results. 
I'll scroll down more and I could choose here if I want to only look at free patterns or patterns that I can purchase. Let's just see what's out there for free. Then there's the option to see patterns with pictures or without. I always say, who wants to make a pattern that doesn't have an example picture? Probably no one. So sometimes you will see results. Like if I searched for a sweater and had 10,000 results, there would be some without pictures. So I'm gonna weed that out as well. Now I could specifically choose the yardage I'm looking to use, but that doesn't matter to me. I'm gonna purchase the yarn for this sweater or dig through my stash to see what I have. Under age or size, this is interesting. The filter options here are for humans, so that doesn't really help us with dogs. And then weight. This is a really important filter when I'm searching for garments. This is where I'm going to choose what weight of yarn I'd like to use for the project. I don't want to make a dog sweater out of fingering weight. I'm looking for something a little heavier, so I'm going to choose DK and worsted. I don't want to go too bulky. And then as I scroll down a bit more, a category I love is the rating. Out of five stars, these ratings are given by Ravelry users who have made the projects. I'm going to choose five stars, assuming that five stars were given because of the clarity of the pattern, hopefully because there are no mistakes in the pattern, and because the people who made these projects had good experiences. That takes us down to 18 results, and we'll stop there. Now my dog sweater results are narrowed down to a single page. This will be a lot quicker to peruse. All right, I'm ready to go back home and do one more search for something that I'm actually looking to make. To get home, all we have to do is click on the Ravelry button. It saves you from having to use the back tab over and over again. Now in the quick search, let's look for a sweater. My search for sweater resulted in 200,000 results. That's a ton of sweaters. So here, our filters are really going to help us out. Let's start in the filter tab, and I'm going to begin with clothing. I'm looking for a sweater, so I'll click sweater, and I'm going to choose pullover sweaters. I'm not looking to do a cardigan, instead I want a complete pullover. Already that's almost cut our search results in half. It's brought us down to a little over 115,000 instead of 200,000. Alright, next I could choose specific attributes. Let's look at color work. I don't think I want this to be color work at all, so I'm not going to choose any of those. I think I'd like something that is a textured knit, maybe something with cables. The next category I'll narrow down is the attributes of the sweater. I know that I'd like this sweater to be a top-down garment. I like working a sweater top down instead of bottom up, simply because I can try it on throughout the process more easily. So let's see how much this narrows down our search. Here's top down, and when I select that, it's brought the search down to 23,000 results. So that's still too many sweaters for us to look through, but we're already at 23,000 down from over 200,000. This next one, the craft, I'd like to look for a knit sweater. That's not going to bring us down too much, but we're still getting a more specific search result. After that, I don't mind purchasing the pattern. I think I'd pay for this pattern. So I'm going to choose Ravelry Download. That means the pattern is going to be available for me to purchase and download through Ravelry. 
Sometimes Ravelry will give us results that are only printed in books, and then that would mean I have to go find the book. I might not want to buy a whole book at this time, so for this project I want to choose a pattern that I can find on Ravelry and download immediately by itself. Here we are, does it have a photo? There are 11 options that don't have a photo. I do want the photo. Next we have yardage. I'm not going to worry about this because in this situation I'm looking for a pattern first and then I'll buy my yarn depending on the pattern I choose. This is a great place if you already have yarn for a sweater or you're working through your stash yarn. If you know you only have a certain amount of yardage, you could select the yardage here to only see results that use that much yardage and no more. Next we have age, size, and fit. This is helpful because several patterns will be written only for adults or only for children. So depending on who you're making the sweater for, it's helpful to go ahead and narrow that down here. I'll choose adult. And then under gender, I could choose male and look at sweaters only intended for men. But in my experience, that really narrows down the search to the point where I'm missing out on a lot of good patterns that haven't been flagged or tagged as sweaters for men. The only differences in a sweater for a man or a woman sometimes would be the body shaping. In a pattern, there might be optional shaping to accommodate a bust or hips, or the pattern might just call for straight up and down shaping of the body. And then I feel like the pattern ends up being more unisex. So I'm not going to select any sort of gender here. I want to look at all the sweaters available to me. Next, this is an important category where I could choose the weight of sweater. You could leave this open, but then you're considering sweaters anywhere from lace weight to bulky or super bulky. And that's a really wide range of garment. Sometimes I do huge Ravelry searches where I keep my search pretty open, but then it takes me days to get through the search results. I'd recommend you sit down and really think about what sort of project you want to make. You can consider how light or heavy you want the garment to be, the texture and feel, and then help those decisions narrow your search. For this search, I'm going to choose worsted weight yarn. And then, as I scroll down further, I'm going to go with only 5-star rated patterns. Keep in mind that if you choose 5-star rated patterns, you are excluding patterns that are brand new releases and haven't yet been rated. Sometimes I take this filter off so I can look through and see, are there brand new patterns I'm missing? But usually, I like to have people work patterns first give it a chance to be reviewed before I jump in. Even if a sweater is coming from a great, well-known, established designer, there's a possibility that certain errors might not have been caught for all of the sizes in their patterns before they were published. So I like to give other people a chance to work these patterns, leave their comments, leave their ratings, and then I come in to see what makes the most sense for my project. Another category that will help us narrow these search results is the difficulty. So I'm going to consider for this pattern, I'd like it to be moderately challenging. So I'm going to choose anything from a moderate rating to a difficult rating. So I'll skip over easy and I'm going to go to medium and I'll leave it there for now. The last thing I'll do is double check that my results are going to be in English because I only speak English, unfortunately. Now I can scroll back up and I'll see that that has resulted in just under 200 results. So we took our sweater search starting at 200,000 results and we narrowed it down to fewer than 200. Filtering the search result gives me peace of mind that everything I'm looking at from this point forward will be the weight I've imagined, the trusted five-star rating, and 
it's going to be a pattern that's available to me to purchase or download through Ravelry. Now I can start daydreaming. Once I reach the end of the first page of patterns, I'll follow the tabs to move to the following pages. As I'm searching through these patterns, if I find that I'm not seeing enough of what I've imagined, I can go back and change my search terms, but keep all of the filters set. For example, I'm seeing a lot of color work patterns, but maybe I'm not feeling like doing any color work for this sweater. Instead, I just want it to be textured. So I might search for a cabled sweater. And then I'll leave all of those filters set, which gives me 58 results. And here I'm seeing more of what I had in mind. I'm seeing solid sweaters with cables and texture. Let's say that this is now too specific and I'm not seeing enough cabled options. So I'm going to take out the worsted category, which means I'll see cabled sweater results for all weights of yarn. That bumped us up to 312 matches. Since I haven't picked my yarn yet, it's fine that I haven't chosen what weight I'd like. I can find the pattern first and then decide if I want to move forward looking for yarn. Now that we've looked at how to navigate a quick search and a filtered search, let's head on over to the Favorites tab. This is going to be under the My Notebook heading, and I can choose Favorites. This is where Ravelry keeps track of any pattern that I've selected as a favorite. If you're doing any sort of search on Ravelry and you see something you like, I urge you to save it as a favorite. If you think you'll remember it later, you might never find it again. There are so many patterns on Ravelry that it can be hard to find something if you see it at a glance and then lose track of what weight it was, um, what yarns it used, all of those different variables. So if you see a pattern you like, save it to your favorites. You can remove it from your favorites later if you don't want it cluttering things up. So in my favorites, I have several patterns. I have 178 total, and I can browse through them just by scrolling page to page, or I can search my favorites. Let's say I want to search my patterns for anything using DK weight yarn. I could search DK, and it's going to narrow things down to 55 results, all of which have the DK tag somewhere in the pattern. I could also search for things like cables, and hopefully it would do the same thing. Here it's giving me any of my favorites that have cable work involved. You could be more specific. I'm going to search fish because I know I have Caitlin Hunter's halibut sweater saved, and even though it's not called fish or fish sweater, it's got the tag fish somewhere in its tags or description of the pattern. So once things are in your favorites, it's pretty easy to navigate them. If I've purchased patterns or added them to my library, if they're free patterns, they'll be located and stored in my library. We can find that by going to the My Notebook tab, scrolling down until we see Library. So anything here in my library is going to be something that I've purchased, or if it's free, it's something I've selected to add to my library. All of these will take me back to the pattern page if I wanted to read more about it, see if there are any updates, or share it with someone else, or it gives me the option to re-download the PDF version of the pattern that I previously purchased. I mentioned before that Ravelry is a social site, so the social aspect of all of this is that you can keep track of the projects you're working on or the projects you've completed, and you can share them publicly if you choose to. 
So under my notebook, I can go to projects. And here you'll see all of the projects I've completed and shared publicly to the Ravelry community. I've only published five patterns that I've completed. I've completed many more than five patterns, but I don't keep the best track of this on Ravelry. One of my New Year's resolutions is to keep better notes, better track of my work, and to eventually go through and put all of that onto Ravelry so it's organized in one place. If we look here at my Oaksa sweater, this is another Caitlin Hunter pattern. You'll see that I added a brief note. This was great fun to make. I would make this again in the future in another favorite color. I didn't have any critiques of the pattern, so there's nothing I felt I needed to add there. And I didn't keep any specific notes about my journey making it, so again, I didn't feel the need to add anything there. I did put what yarn I used and what color, which can be helpful to other Ravelry users to see examples of what people have made projects from. And I uploaded a few pictures. This way, someone else who's considering the pattern could click on my project and see my experience and my result. To upload your own finished projects, you come to this tab and you click Add a Project. Once there, you can specify the type of craft, the name of your project, and you can link it to the pattern you used. An even easier way to add a project to your Ravelry list is by first going to the pattern page. You could search for the pattern or find it via your favorites or library. So here I'll select the halibut sweater, which I'm currently working on. And then to the right I can choose cast on. It gives me the opportunity to name my project, so I'll give it some sort of name here. And then just like that, with a few clicks, I've created my project. From that point, I can edit the page and add further information. I could add notes, pictures, and anything else I need to keep track of my finished or in-progress project. After that comes a real rabbit hole of a category on Ravelry, and that is the Stash tab. The Stash tab is a place where you could list every type of yarn you own, and the exact yardage, the weight of yarn, um, any criteria you like, you can keep track of it here in your Ravelry Stash tab. Keeping your stash organized through Ravelry does a couple of really great things. One, if you are away from home, if you are shopping for yarn in person or traveling, you can pull up your Ravelry stash through your phone or computer, and you can see exactly what yarn you have and how much of it you have. So if you find a pattern you'd like to make or you're considering pairing your yarn with something else that you find in a store, you'll know just at a glance if you have enough already at home to execute that project. Of course, the other great thing of keeping track of your stash is that you know what you have. So if you are ready to start a new project, instead of having to dig through crates or bins of yarn or guess, you can look at your Ravelry stash and see exactly what yarn you have in the exact quantity. So. If you're somebody who likes to stay organized, this is a great tool where you can keep track of all of your yarn, and additionally, you can keep track of all of your tools. The Tools tab allows you to keep track of every tool you have in a very detailed inventory. Again, this is something great to reference if you are considering a project, if you're away from your collection of tools, you can see if you already own these items, whether or not you need to purchase new ones, etc. The same tab exists for hand spun yarn. Another social element of Ravelry is that other users can message you, so you have an inbox as part of your Ravelry account. I've never accessed my inbox before today, so you'll see here I have the number 28, and if I click on it, it takes me to 28 unread messages, most of which are friend requests. 
if you have people you know in person or people you've met online, you can friend them through Ravelry, which allows you to stay connected and more easily see what they're working on, reach out to them in the future, etc. So I need to go through my messages and accept some friend requests and uh, stay in contact with other Ravelry users. Next to the inbox tab is boards. If you click on this, it will take you to message boards or forums. Some of these might be uh, relating to groups that you're already a part of on Ravelry, or they could be randomly recommended to you based on your interests. So here, I'm a part of a board for my local shop. There's no new posts there, but there are several posts on these other recommended boards. The boards here are patterns, techniques, yarn and fiber, for the love of Ravelry, etc. Let's pick a message board to take a look at. Under techniques, there is um, tips for unraveling stranded color work. If I click on that, I'll see that someone has asked for tips and advice on unraveling a stranded color work yoke. And then we'll see responses. Some people just saying, I feel for you, I've been there. Other people giving us specific advice or recommendations. So that's a little bit of the social aspect of Ravelry here. Speaking of groups on Ravelry, let's take a look at that tab. There are all sorts of groups, some specifically for knit-alongs, crochet-alongs, craft-alongs, and everything else you can think of. So if you're curious about a group, you can just search. I'll search cats and see if there are cat related groups. Cat knits for the love of cats and knitting and crafts. Under the spell of an orange cat, black cat lovers, my knitting has cat hair in it, etc. So if you're interested in the social aspects of Ravelry, there are groups, forums, pages for everyone out there. Another Ravelry feature that I use fairly often is to look for a specific type of yarn and sometimes a specific colorway of that yarn to see what other people have made from it. If I go to the home page, instead of searching for patterns, I can choose to search yarn. A yarn that I previously struggled with when choosing a project is Barocco Sesame, so let's search for that. This will take me to any fibers relating to those search terms, which here are sesame and summer sesame. So uh, sesame is what I'm looking for. It's going to tell me all the details about the yarn, which is helpful in case you've thrown away a label. And then I'm going to look for my specific colorway because I'd like to see what people have made out of this colorway before I commit to a project. And the color I'm looking for is Blue Poppy 7424. It shows me that 135 Ravelry users say that they have this yarn in their stash and that there are 97 completed projects using this yarn. So that's what I'm looking for. Now I'm just seeing search results for all projects that contain this specific color of Barocco Sesame. And again, if something piques my interest, I can click on that to see more detailed information and possibly more pictures. Let's look here at these mitts. So now I can click through these pictures to see how the yarn is going to work up for this type of project. And I want to keep going just a bit. Oh, here it is in a hat. That's cute. So I'm going to click on that. And let's see the pictures. Okay. 
So it looks like they used less than one skein of blue poppy. So that's great to know. Out of just one skein, I could make this style of hat. Whether I make the same pattern or a different hat, it still gives me a good idea of how the yarn's going to look worked up in this type and size of project. And if I really liked this idea or I just wanted to keep track of it in case I want to use my sesame for something similar, I could save that to my favorites. All right, I think we've explored the specifics that I wanted to cover for Ravelry. So a few more general ways to navigate the site, especially if you're new to crafting or are new to searching for patterns on Ravelry. On the homepage, I'll see that up top, I have the options of patterns, yarn, community, support, and an advanced search. So under patterns, it will take me to the pattern search page. And instead of searching for a pattern, I can look at some of the categories here. There is hot right now, showing me the designs that have the most views in the last 24 hours. And then there are also Spotlight debut patterns. So these are going to be patterns from new Ravelry users publishing for the first time. Then there's a brief look at my history. That's a good tip if you've been looking for things and you can't find them again. You can look at your history, just like your history on an internet browser. You can find your history for everything you viewed on Ravelry. And then there are pattern highlights specifically geared towards things that I like. So Ravelry knows what I like because of things that I've purchased or things that I've saved to my favorites. So the patterns here might come from some of the same designers or have some of the same attributes of things that I previously showed interest in. It's nice to come to a page like this where you have things specifically curated for your interests, especially if you're in a sort of rut of what patterns you'd like to make or what to search for, you can explore things this way. The same general tab exists for patterns. Here you can see popular new yarns, you can search for yarns, you can browse by fiber, and there's even a road trip planner, which I think is pretty cool. If you know you're going on a trip and you're not sure of fiber shops along the way, Ravelry will help you find them. And the last thing worth noting is the social aspect of the site. In addition to the forums we've looked at and the inbox, you can search specifically for other crafters. If you know of friends that are on Ravelry, you can find them this way. You can look at your friends list and see what they're working on, or you can spend some time searching for groups. Like our group search earlier, you'll see that there are groups covering almost every topic out there. And there's also a tab that will take you to events. You can look for events happening in your area, or you can see a general list of events and maybe plan a trip or choose an excursion to attend something going on. That's it for my Ravelry exploration. I hope that some of you were able to learn something new about how to navigate the site, and I'm sure there are many of you who know a lot more about Ravelry than I do and have tips ready for me. If that's the case, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to better use the resource, and I should probably go and plug in a few more of my projects right about now. Happy knitting, happy crocheting, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.